uh, I started wrestling in late 2011. My first tour was early summer of 2012. I'm from the, the Maritimes in Canada on the East Coast. So the tour was a Grand Prix Legends Tour. The Atlantic Grand Prix Wrestling was the territory in the Maritimes back in the 70s and 80s, uh, promoted by Emile Dupree. So all of those old wrestlers, Leo Burke, The Beast, Rudy Kay, Bobby Bass, so on and so forth, are very well-known around these parts. It was my first tour. On well, the first night of the tour, we were wrestling on uh, PEI, and a friend of mine who I trained with and myself were wrestling the promoter and Bushwhacker Luke. He's fucking hilarious, and wrestling him is an experience, to say the least. So we're out back, we're talking about the match, we're putting the match together, and uh, I'm looking at the promoter as Bushwhacker Luke is going on and on about all the spots he wants to do, because that's what Bushwhacker Luke does, he wants to do a bunch of comedy spots, and he talks a million miles a minute, and you can't understand the fucking word he says, so the promoter's got this terrified look on his face, and this was my first tour, he's been wrestling for fuck knows how long. So probably about 10 minutes before the show started, I believe we were the second match, the promoter says, uh, you know what, guys, I'm going to uh, step out of this match and uh, put this guy in the match instead. So this other guy, who was not really much of a wrestler, he decided to throw into the match because he didn't want to have to remember all these spots. Also, forgot to mention, in the corner of Bushwhacker Luke is Leo Burke, who is, without a doubt, the biggest star from Atlantic Grand Prix Wrestling. The match was a goddamn train wreck. Everything was fucked. (laughs) The finish got messed up where Leo Burke was supposed to push my friend off the top rope. Uh, And then we get out back. If you've never had the pleasure, Colt, of seeing Bushwhacker Luke tear a rookie and new asshole verbally, because he proceeded to yell at us for probably 15 minutes about how we're fucking stupid, calling us the shit, telling us everything looked like garbage, not exactly being the nicest guy. Uh, And then we look over, and sitting on the bench with a huge smile on his face, just staring at this whole exchange was Chavo Guerrero, who thought this was hilarious. So luckily for us, Chavo's a really nice guy, and Chavo comes up to us after Bushwhacker walks away, calls us pussies, or whatever the fuck he said, and uh, Chavo proceeded to very nicely explain to us everything we did wrong and give us a ton of excellent advice. Chavo was awesome. Yeah, there's always got to be that one baby face that was Chavo. Although I could see myself in both situations at that point. You have to think back to when you were a rookie and you knew absolutely nothing. But it's hard for a person like Bushwhacker Luke, who's literally been wrestling 40 years at this point. Something astronomical like that. But even me, if it was me at 20 years and I see these mistakes that these wrestlers are making, I would get a little frustrated I've learned to zen myself in my older years, even my younger years. I never really took it too serious. But there is a point where you could take it serious and you're like, come on, what? You got to know how to do the very fundamentals of professional wrestling. So I've, I could see myself being on the Bushwhacker side. But I could also see myself being on the Chavo side from being an outside perspective, watching this go down, seeing two young kids get ripped apart and just being like, guys... In 10 years, no one will give a shit about this. In two weeks, no one will even remember this. But you won't think about it. You'll be a seasoned wrestler at this point, and you'll be doing the same exact speech to somebody else. So good ups to Chavo, but I'm not going to blame Bushwhacker. I'm going to stand up for my own. The wild card in this call was obviously the promoter, and I could picture that promoter right now. I don't know who he is, but I know the kind. They thought they were just going to have like an easy match with Bushwhacker Luke. Then all of a sudden, here comes Bushwhacker with all his Bushwhacker spots. The promoter's got to worry about the door, worry about the card, worry about concessions. He's got to worry about everything. He thought it was a little walk and talk. I'll watch him raise his arms a little bit and then I'll be out of here and consider me wrestled on the show. No, this was going to be WrestleMania PEI. (laughs) The biggest show in town and Bushwhacker Luke at 74 years old wanted to make sure this was going to be the greatest match in Canadian wrestling history. And bless his heart for that. Bless his heart for that. So yes, from a wrestler's perspective, if you pluck yourself out and pluck somebody else in at the last second with someone like Bushwhacker Luke, and let's talk about comedy wrestling, it's very intricate. So if you don't know the specific timing when it comes to comedy wrestling, It's not going to be funny, and it's going to be awful. Even if you have the correct timing, it may not be funny. It's very hard to do. 
I talk all about it in my Wrestling Road Diaries 3 documentary, Fun Equals Money, available at coltmerch.com. Wink. Hey, thanks for watching. That call was part of a whole podcast called Wrestling Anonymous. Listen to the whole thing weekly. Wherever you listen to your podcast, go subscribe. And while you're at it, subscribe right here on YouTube to Colt Cabana's channel. Thank you.